to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Hey, Ebro, it's Kamala Harris. How are you? Madam Vice President. I've been waiting to say that. How are you? Uh, it's good to hear your voice. It's good to hear your voice. You been well? I've been great. And you? One day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, that's all you could do in that job. Uh, and, on, yeah. and, and well, you know, listen, there's a, uh, first of all, thank you for coming to the program, Madam Vice President. Um, I, you know, I've had the pleasure of knowing you before this job, but I'm gonna hit you with the Madam yeah. Vice President, uh, if you don't mind, yeah. if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so Madam Vice President, uh, I want to get to the business because there's big business happening with the passing of this, uh, trillion plus dollar infrastructure bill. Um, and I know, you know, uh, you know, the president is going around making sure everybody understands what it means. And I want to thank you for giving time to us so we can have kind of a layman's conversation about what this means for everyday people. Uh, and I wanted, yeah, to, and yeah. I want, and I wanted to give you the floor to kind of start there. Uh, and then I'm going to ask, um, and just kind of to, to prep everyone because this is where the rubber meets the road when you hear the language around like minority contracts and government contracts. Um, and oftentimes we hear that language, but us regular people don't necessarily understand what that means. So I'm going to be asking you about that, too, for the small business owners and the construction workers and the people out there that may have a business and they want to get access to helping fix America. So let's start with what this means for everyday people. Well, what it means for everyday people, and Ebro, it's good to be with you again. What it means for everyday people is a lot. First of all, it's about bringing down the cost of living. Okay. You know, it's expensive to live, and folks are barely making it, especially with this pandemic, which we're now experiencing the second year of. So what the infrastructure bill does, and what the, the act now, what it does, is a number of things. Um, take, for example, the issue of public transportation. So... Black workers commute by public transportation at nearly four times the rate of white workers, right? Mm, okay. And what I don't need to tell folks listening who take the bus, who take the, the, the train, is that often they break down. Right. Often there aren't enough buses on the route that you need to get to work, which means you have to wait a long time and it's a longer commute. We're putting $90 billion into public transportation over the next five years. This is one of the biggest infusions of resources into public transportation. You look at New York, all those bridges that are in disrepair. That's right. And what does this mean for real folks? It means that when you're saying that prayer as you're driving across that bridge or driving across that road with potholes, hoping you don't get flat tires, knowing that it costs at least $100 to replace a tire. So this is a big deal. Um, look at it in terms of what we're doing with the infrastructure deal that is about broadband so many of our babies, so many of our children lost really significant amounts of their educational process through the pandemic because they did not have access or could not afford high-speed Internet. So they couldn't learn from home when that was the only option. Or their parents had to drive to the parking lot at McDonald's to have access to the public Wi-Fi. We're going to put $65 billion dollars into high-speed Internet, both in terms of accessibility, because not everyone actually even has access to it, but also affordability, because we got plenty of folks who could have access, but it's not affordable. Right. Particularly, we're going to have a voucher for low-income families so that they will, the, the voucher will be for $30 a month for low-income families. Also, a subsidy of $100 for folks to be able to get Internet devices for wow. low-income families. So these are some of the things we're going to do. Lead pipes. So many of our children, black and brown children in particular, around the country, yep. are, they don't have clean water. You know, the, 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 it is very clear lead, lead pipes cause damage to a child's brain and nervous system. We're putting money into cleaning up and getting rid of the lead pipes in America. And it's going to directly impact children, and in particular, black and brown and poor children. So these are some of the things that we are doing that is going to have a direct impact on real people. Now, for, for you know, this is at the federal level, and obviously working in radio, 
you know, you're dealing with localities, you're dealing with the regular everyday neighborhood folk. And oftentimes at your level of the game, being the vice president and working with the president, people would love for you to come right to their neighborhood and make sure all this money is spent (laughs) correctly, (laughs) uh, efficiently, um, and, you know, without you know, the bureaucracy that sometimes leads to funds not getting down to the people. And I know at the federal level, it's hard for you guys to make sure this stuff is handled right by the states and thus handled right by counties and cities. Is there a conversation around monitoring this? And I know this is supposed to roll out over the next five years, but do you believe the systems that we have in place to make sure that the everyday folks see the benefits the right way and actually feel it are there? So let me just tell you that to your very point, because you couldn't be more right, the the president just announced Mitch Landrieu, who was the former mayor of New Orleans, is going to be in charge of making sure that the the money and the resources and the help gets directly to the people without the bureaucracy that can slow it down. Because you are right. We could do things in Washington, D.C., but this is not the time to celebrate because we get it out of D.C. The time to celebrate the success is when it hits the street right. and impacts people. And so that and we know how bureaucracy can get in the way of that, which is why we put Mitch Landrieu in charge of making sure. But I'm going to tell you, I mean, even up to now, during since I've been vice president, you know, I've been to Detroit and Milwaukee, Chicago, Atlanta, Cleveland, Oakland, my hometown. And and we're going to keep doing that to make sure that the folks who were intended to receive the relief and the help actually receive it. So um, a lot has been made. I'm sure, you know, shout to your team because I know they stay in tune. A lot has been made about where is Madam Vice President Kamala Harris? We haven't heard from her. Before she got the job, we was hearing from her all the time. And, you know, often I get on the radio like, y'all, it's not even been 12 months. Like, let the lady get into the job. Let them get the, you know, they've been working on this infrastructure bill, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not what the people want to want to hear. They want to critique every move you make because you you are you are that chick, as they say. Um, what do you have to say to people who who are feeling like they haven't heard from Madam Vice President enough and want to hear from her more? Well, first of all, I I appreciate that. And there are a lot of people who are responsible for the election in 2020 and and the Biden-Harris team coming in office. So I appreciate the spirit behind the sentiment. But I'm doing what, what everybody elected us to do. So that, you know, we came in with clear instructions from the voters who stood in line in many cases for hours, Um, who, in the midst of their busy lives, took the time to vote. And what people said is, if we elect you, we want you to see us and and address our needs. Like, for example, the child tax credit. Well, we've been working on that so that we could get families, you know, up to $3,600 a year or more working families who need help to support their children and raise their children. We've been working on dealing with this pandemic and, you know, I've been traveling around the country, especially at the early stages when we were holding, you know, these pop-up vaccination sites to make sure folks get vaccinated. Because on that point, let me be clear, these vaccines are free, they are safe, and they will save your life. That's a fact. And now children can get vaccines, and, and we got to do that. That's the way we get on top of this pandemic. But, you know, and it's also about getting this infrastructure deal done. And that, that's involved, you know, traveling around the country to, to speak with folks about lead pipes and toxic water and what we need to do to be on top of that, what we need to do around high-speed Internet and all the folks we know who can't afford it or don't have access, supporting our small businesses with a particular emphasis on black and minority-owned small businesses, knowing that they were some of the most to suffer through the pandemic and need relief. Um, the work that we've been doing includes pushing out resources to community banks because, as we know, folks want to be able to use their innovation to start a business, but they need access to capital, and we want to create greater access to capital. These are the things that I've been working on. And, um, and look, I, I think that the most important way to judge the work is, to your point, does it hit the streets? Does it really address the needs of the people? And are we lifting up 
you know, the ability of folks to have a, a, a certain quality of life that, that that allows them to take care of their basic needs. Well, and if Last we're be- question, Ebro. No problem. And if we're being honest, uh, Madam Vice President, you know, people just miss you. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to keep it honest. You know, that's, that's you know, in the hood when they be like, ah, you done changed. You know, where you been at? <laughs> that's really a dysfunctional way of saying, ah, oh, we miss you. Where you been at? Come holla at us. Um, but my last question is this, um, and this is for the uh, the minority owned, uh, you know, construction workers, uh, construction businesses, contracting businesses, which is, you know, something that going back to the infrastructure bill. What can these businesses do? Look, I live in New York and New Jersey, and I feel like, you know, I can get on the microphone every day and I can talk to elected politicians and elected elected officials about what they are and are not doing and hold them accountable. But there are people who live in states that are actively working to disenfranchise black and brown people, not only at voting, but through business and other things. What what so, can what can people do if they have a business and they want to get in on this infrastructure bill and they have a minority owned business? Who do they call? Right. How can they protect themselves and get at this work? So I'll, I'll go back. You're, first of all, you're absolutely right. And, um, you know, it, the, the infrastructure bill is about the creation of millions of jobs, but it is also about helping small businesses grow and um, and c- continue to be successful, not just survive, but to thrive and be successful. So on that point, yes, it is about increasing the resources in community banks so people have access to capital to grow their businesses. But also, we are the federal government. Just to put your point in, in, in numbers, the federal government spends six hundred and fifty billion with a B dollars every year on purchasing goods and services. So we have directed federal agencies to grow federal contracting with small disadvantaged businesses, including black owned businesses by 50%. 50. So that, that was a, that was a five zero. Five zero. Five zero. Okay. And that means an additional hundred billion dollars over five years, five years to help more Americans, you know, do exactly what you're talking about, which is, you know, realize their dreams, but, you know, but thrive. Everybody should have the opportunity to make their money and, and, and grow their business and provide for their family. And this is a very important point, and that federal contracting point is really significant as a detail that matters. So I appreciate you raising it, and, and we've been dealing with that. Well, um, thank, you, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice President, for your time today. Hopefully I get to talk to you soon throughout the years to come. Thank you for your work. Thank you for your focus. Uh, and shout out to your team, you know, making sure uh, you had time for us today. Well, I'm really glad to talk to you. And we will talk more often because you, your voice is so important. Your audience is so important. So I'll, I'll talk to you again soon. But take care and have a happy Thanksgiving. There she is. Madam Vice President, happy Thanksgiving to you, too. And happy holidays to everybody. Thank you so much. Take care.